Hey, Andy, did you hear that whistle? Sure did, Amos. That whistle means Rinso White, Rinso Bright, Rinso New. That's right. It means that this is Sunday and we're on the air for Rinso with Solium. The Amos and Andy Show with Lou Lubin, Roy Glenn, Verna Felton, Shirley Mitchell, Alan Reed, Joe Kearns, Jeff Alexander and his orchestra, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. Yes, sir. The Amos and Andy Show brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of new Rinso, the only soap that contains solium. That's why Rinso gets your clothes whiter and brighter than new. Rinso white, Rinso bright, Rinso new. Happy little wash day song. Off and on, Andy has been going with the Kingfish's secretary, Charmaine. Well, it's finally blossomed into true love, and after much deliberation, Andy has decided to take the fatal step. At the moment, we find Andy the Kingfish about to go into New York's swankiest jewelry store to buy an engagement ring. Yeah, and it just takes me back to the days when I bought my wife Sapphire an engagement ring. You do, huh? Yeah, I bought a beautiful ring, a platinum setting with a good big pearl in it. Yeah. The only trouble was on our honeymoon, we'd run into a little bad luck. Yeah. She was washing out my socks in hot water, and the pearl done dissolved on us. <laughs> yeah, that water is dangerous stuff, all right. Well, she don't wear the ring much no more, except on formal occasions. Then instead of the pearl, why, she just sticks a white jelly bean in the setting or whatever she has. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, let's get in the store here. I want to get a nice ring for Charmaine. Yeah, for Charmaine. Yeah, just a swanky jewelry store, all right, ain't it? Oh, yeah. It ain't no musical instruments, fish and tackle, or nothing else in the window. Hey, well, here's the salesman now. Ah, how do you do, gentlemen? What may I do for you? Uh, I is interested in buying the engagement ring, but I want the non-dissolving kind. <laughs> oh, yes, an engagement ring right over at this counter here. Yeah, the boy wants a nice diamond here, something around eight or nine carats. You know he wants oh. a nice ring. <laughs> well, let me show you what we have here in the case. Now, in this top tray, we have rings running around $5,000. Mm, well, that's a little too high. Well, the tray below is the $3,000 bracket. Then below that, we have the 2000 tray, and below that, the 1500 Now, uh, what would you be interested in? Yeah, you got in the trays in the basement, uh... <laughs> Oh, tell me, uh, just what price did you want to pay? Well, uh, I would say, uh... Well, about, uh... Oh, something in that neighborhood, or even two, three dollars higher in that neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, the truth of the matter is, mister, I can go as high as thirty-two dollars. That's providing I ain't got to lay out more than a buck and a quarter down. <laughs> Some days it doesn't even pay to get out of bed. <laughs> well, uh, maybe I could raise the whole thirty dollars if you got something nice. Well, I'll show you the size stone I can give you at that price. Now, where did I put my tweezers? <laughs> ah, here. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, that's a pretty ring, all right. But where's the stone? Oh, it's there, all right. If you'll just crouch down and look up through the light, I think you'll catch a glimmer of it. Uh, you see it, Kingfish? Yeah, well, something winked at me there. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see it now, too, I think. Uh, yeah, the crouch is what done it, all right. <laughs> And it uh, sure gonna be a lot of crouching and squinting at your engagement, Hort, <laughs> uh, Okay, mister, I'll take it. I'll be back in an hour with the money. Very well. Come on, Kingfish. Boy, I ain't gonna lose no time. Uh, I'm going over to her house and pop the question to Charmaine tonight. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, what you think of the ring? Well, then it has one big advantage this ring got over any other one that you could have bought. What's that? If that stone ever dissolves in hot water, Charmaine will never know it. You see, you got it. <laughs> Yeah, hi, honey, hi, hi. I got a big surprise for you tonight, and I know it's going to make you happy. Oh, that's wonderful, Andy. But first, come on in the living room. I want you to meet somebody. You mean you ain't alone? Oh, no, Andy. An old schoolmate of mine that's in town for a little while dropped in. His name is Bosworth Carruthers. We used to go together when we was kids. Mm, yeah. Come on in, Andy. Okay. Oh, 
Have you a caller, Charmaine? Andy Brown, I'd like you to meet Bosworth Carruthers, one of the finest actors in the American theater today. Words are inadequate to express my delight at this meeting, sir. Mm, yes, sir. That's a coincidence. Uh, my words is the same thing. <laughs> Mr. Brown, Charmaine and I were just having an interesting discussion about the theater. Are you a theatrical habitué? Uh, is I a what? <laughs> I say, do you attend the legitimate theater? Oh, show, sure, show. Sure. I don't mess with nothing that's crooked. <laughs> been so thrilled with the theater. And, Bosworth, you was explaining so wonderfully. Well, Charmaine, I was merely trying to point out that Molnar and his play Lilium showed the true European approach to tragedy. Uh, but, Bosworth, don't you think that in Macbeth, greed and ambition was a great source of tragedy? Yes, but I don't think either one compared with the Greek sense of tragedy as uh, illustrated perfectly by Sophocles in his classic work, Oedipus Rex. Did anybody see Abbott and Costello in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brown, we of the theater hardly consider the motion picture a recognized art form. Yeah, well, I agree with you. It ain't got the bounce that you get to the burlesque show. <laughs> That's not what Bosworth was talking about. I'm afraid, Charmaine, in steering the conversation to the Grecian theater, we are discussing something Mr. Brown is not familiar with. Yeah, that's right. I don't talk to many Greeks. Uh... <laughs> yes. Well, let's uh, bring the discussion to something more up to date. Uh, Mr. Brown, did you get to South Pacific? Mm, no, sir. They never sent me overseas at all. I had flat feet. <laughs> I believe the deformity extends to your head. <laughs> yes, sir. well, I has always been a deep thinker, all right. Uh, uh, Andy, wouldn't you like to read a magazine or something? Well, I was just noticing here, it's 10.30. Ain't that kind of late, Mr. Crothers? Late? Yeah, ain't you got no other friends you want to see? Macbeth or one of them other Greeks or something? <laughs> There's nothing I'd rather do than sit and talk about the theater. Yeah, well, you know, Mr. Carruthers, <laughs> three's the crowd. Yes, that's right. It is, isn't it? Well, Brown, it's been nice meeting. Sorry you have to run like this. Uh, I'll uh, get your hat, Andy. Uh, well, something went wrong here. Well, uh, get your hat, Andy. Yeah, but Charmaine, there was something that I wanted to tell you. Whatever honey, it is, I... call me tomorrow. Well, I'll open the door for you. Mm. Good night, Andy. Nice of you to drop in, Brown. Yeah, but I want to... Well... Maybe it's just as well I didn't give her the engagement ring tonight. With that dim light in there, she never would have seen the stone know-how. Yeah, Amos, it's all over between me and Charmaine. Oh, I said I'm sorry to hear that, Andy. Oh, I was really busted up over the thing, Amos. I can't sleep. I even got to force myself to eat. Force yourself to eat, huh? Yeah. You in bad shape, Andy. Oh, it was awful last night, sitting in that restaurant there, weeping and blubbering all over. First thing I know, I blubbered my way through 14 hamburgers. <laughs> well, tell me this, Andy. What come between you and Charmaine? Is, is there another man? Well, not exactly. Charmaine done run into an old schoolmate of hers that's an actor. Oh, actor? And she started comparing me to him, and I come out on the short end of the thing. Oh, I see, yeah. You see, he was so cultured and polished and refined that alongside of him, it makes me look like a bigger bum than I is. <laughs> oh, this Bosworth fellow is the kind of man she admire and like her husband to be. Well, that's too bad, Anna. Sorry to hear it, boy. And only a week ago, she said that I was the only man in the world for her. Yeah, well, you know the old saying, Anna, it's a woman's peroxide to change your mind so you can't blame her. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, Amos. I ain't going to take this land down. I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, you, then. Yes, sir. If Charmaine wants a fellow that's cultured and refined, I tell you, Amos, I'm going to outdo them theatrical people. Listen, Amos, did you ever hear of Tallulah Bankhead? Oh, certainly. Well, I'm going to be more cultured and refined than he ever was. I love you. Oh, 
Oh, come in, Shorty. Uh, uh, can, uh, can, uh, do, do you think, uh, would, would you, uh, if I got, uh, what, what do you think if I, uh, that is, uh, what do I mean? Shorty, what in the world did you say there? Uh, don't ask me. I can't understand the stuff myself. <laughs> You'd be all right if you ever got that mouth of yours out of low gear, you know. Uh, say, Kingfish, a- Andy was in my barber shop this morning, and he, he was all upset. Yeah, well, what's the matter with the boy? Last time I seen him, he was on his way to Shaw Men's to give her an engagement ring. Yeah, well, it, s- it seemed the trouble started when, when she met she met uh, some friend of hers that's an actor, you see. That this actor was so polished and cultured that she decided that Andy wasn't the type that she liked after all. Yeah, I can see your point there. Yeah, got... Them actors really got polish and culture, all right. You, you know something, Ken? Fish? I, 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 I was an actor once. Sure, you was an actor? No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me and my brother was a sensation on the stage. And believe me, there's no question about it. We, we got some of the biggest laughs in the history of the theater. Why, why, they even had to carry all the people out of the place, doubled up with laughter. Well, you must have uh, had a great act, Shorty. Uh, what did you and your brother do? N- nothing. We just come out and stood there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that could bring down the house, all right. Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, Annie is so desperate to get, get, to get, uh, get, back, uh, get back with Charmaine that he's thinking of going to one of them charm schools and... Get, getting yourself done over. Yeah. Well, if the boy wants uh, culture and refinement, he don't have to go to one of them charm schools. I, as his friend, I could help him. Yeah, the only thing is, Andy has got a lot of rough edges. Well, I could remove them. He, he's got a little extra weight. I could remove that, too. Yeah, of course, that's one thing. Uh, Andy's got the money to pay for a regular cause. Yeah, this removing stuff is getting better all the time. <laughs> Uh, you know, I got to get to work on that broken-hearted boy as soon as I can. Yeah, well, good luck to you, Kingfish. I got to run along now. I, I'm trying to get my uh, get, get my old job back as a census taker. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I remember you doing that the last time. Pretty good job, wasn't it? No, oh, yeah, a wonderful job. But I got fired the first day. I, I, I remember I, I, I went up to this one house and rang the doorbell, and, and the most beautiful girl I ever see I, I, I ever seen answered. Oh, she was the most gorgeous creature I, I, I ever laid eyes on. But, 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 but it was on account of her that I, I got fired. How come, Shorty? Well, I, made, I, I made a mistake in her age. Uh, I left out the whole column that I should have put. Uh, I forgot to ask her what what I took six hours to count her. <laughs> No, oh, come in, Brother Ender. Hey, Kingfish, uh, where's your secretary, Charmaine? She ain't in the outer office. Well, she must be out to lunch, Ender. Excuse all my grinning and smiling here, Ender. <laughs> but this is a big day for me, boy. Yeah? Yeah, just got my charm school license from the state of New York. Your charm school license, you say? Yeah, hanging out in my charm shingle tomorrow, Ender. Wait a minute, you mean that you is operating a charm school? Oh, yeah, yeah. Read you what I say right here on my license. Listen to this. Yeah. Say, uh, this is the sort of fly that, uh, George Kingfish Stevens is authorized to deep blubber, unslob, and further culture up uh, any and all ill mannered boobs of all sexes, including Alaska and the Virgin Islands. Yeah. <laughs> signed here to commission the public charm, Her- 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 Harriet Hubbard Airwick. There it is, right there. You mean, you really charms people up, huh? Oh, yes, Anna. The people come in the front door crude, stupid, and uncultured, and when they leave, they're as high-class, refined men and women. Hmm. In other words, Anna, I was running what might be called a social sheep dip. That's what I run. (laughs) You know know something, Kingfish? This is quite a coincidence here, because I I done come to the conclusion that I could use a little dipping myself. Yeah, Anna, when I uh, look at you standing there... With the top off your derby, the slit in your shoes, and the hole in your elbow, I think you've got more ventilation than you is class, you know that? Well, as a culture expert, Kingfish, just what would you say is wrong with me? Well, sizing you up, hand off hand, I say you are suffering from what we call in the charm business, untrouble. Untrouble? Yeah, you are uncultured, unrefined, unpolished, and uncouth. Now, the first thing you got to do, boy, is to un-un yourself. That's what you got to do. <laughs> 
it, Anna. You've got to get rid of all the uns you got. What about my underwear? <laughs> well, Anna, you keep that. That happens to be one of the uns that is socially acceptable there. Now, you, you really think that you can do something for me? Well, Anna, you're pretty far gone, but nothing is impossible, you know. After all, they made penicillin out of moldy bread, so I... <laughs> well, how much would it cost to fix me up? Well, for instance, then, for $25, I could turn you out with striped trousers, mm-hmm. a morning coat, a monocle in your eye, and have you looking like uh, Ronald Coleman. Yeah, that'd make you hit with Charmaine, all right. Because what she wants is a fellow that's culture. Well, then, for $25, you would look like Mr. Coleman, but there's just one little hitch. What's that? When you opened your mouth, you would still be your own stupid self. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that ain't a very pretty thought, is it? No, but there's a bright side to it, Ender. For another six bits, I'd have you talking like Ronald Coleman, too. Yeah, well, now, looking like him and talking like him sound great. I'll take the course. Fine, Ender, but there's just one more little thing. Uh-huh. You will look like Ronald Coleman and you will talk like Ronald Coleman. The only thing is, when you go to a formal dinner, you will still eat like Lassie. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> More money, huh? Uh, more money, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, uh, uh, my course and etiquette will run another ten bucks. Well, fasten the facts, Andy. You was uh, sort of hit new low in uncouthness, yeah, and I feared that doing a first-class job on you going to run the neighborhood a $100. That's what I think. $100. Well, okay, Kingfish, I don't care. I'll sign up with you. Now you're talking, son. Yeah, of course, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. After I sign up, I'm going to get a lawyer and investigate the school. I'm going to check your license, and if it ain't legitimate, I'm going to turn it over to the district attorney. And I'm going to have you thrown in jail. And then after you get out of there, I'm going to be waiting at the gate with a mallet and start working on you myself from there on. <laughs> well, so much for the charm school. What's new, Andy? <laughs> I thought so, Kingfish. That's just what I thought. Now, listen, I ain't messing with no phony school like you got. I'm going to go to a real charm school, because Charmaine is interested in fellas that's cultured and refined. And I'm going to be the kind of fella she likes. Well, then I got to hand it to you. You must really be in love with Charmaine. Really something when a fella decides to make herself over to get married. Like putting on a tuxedo to go to the electric chair. That's what you got. <laughs> yeah, well, Charmaine is worth it, because she's the gal for me, all right. Hey, wait a minute, Kingpiece. I just heard her come back into the outer office there. Yeah, probably back from lunch. Yeah. Yeah, what you going to say to her, Anna? Oh, I ain't even going to talk to her till I find a charm school and gets myself made over. And I'm going to let her know I was mad about the other night, too. I'm going to walk right through her office and out the door without even looking at her. I'm going to walk through there with my nose way up in the air and my eyes on the ceiling. Mm, that's the stuff, Ander. You said it. I'll show her who's crude and stupid. found yourself a real charm school, huh? Oh, yeah. I signed up this morning at a high-class place, mm-hmm. the Elite Charm School. I'm on my way over there now. Mm-hmm. They say they're going to teach me manners, how to speak diction, slim me up, and make me all round charming. Yeah, well, that's a great thing, Andy. Yeah, you will really be a type of man Charmaine will go for after this. Yeah, there's one thing, though, that puzzles me. When I walked in that charm school over there, the head of the place said they was very happy to have me. They say I was a real challenge. <laughs> well, I wish you luck, Andy. In them charm school ads, I see them before and after pictures, but you was about the before us before. I'd have never seen you. I never... Welcome to the elite charm school, Mr. Brown. I am Miss Burlinson of the speech department. Mm, yes, ma'am. I'm pleased to meet you. This is an extremely important course because we cannot attain charm and refinement unless we speak with proper diction. Yeah, well, I ain't got no argument with that. Just learn me what you're going to learn me. <laughs> Mr. Brown, perhaps we'd better commence. I uh, think we have a long day ahead of us. Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, what I want you to do is pay close attention to this. 
I can't help laughing when I see my aunt dancing on the grass. Yeah, she must be a funny-looking old gal. Or... <laughs> Mr. Brown, this is a vocal exercise. Oh, oh. To yeah. speak correctly, you must understand the pronunciation of the vowels. Are you familiar with the vowels? Oh, Joe. A E I O U. Except the leap year, I think there's one more, eh? <laughs> Mr. Brown, we enunciate the vowels from the diaphragm. A E I O U. Your diaphragm sounds like an empty barrel. Yeah? Let us put two vowels together and form a diphthong. Yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> now, uh, now, uh, A and I is I, and E and I is E, and O and I is Oi, and O and U is Oo. Now, A I I E I E, O I Oi, A I I E I E. That sounds like the chorus of Old MacDonald Had a Farm. <laughs> Mr. Brown, please concentrate. Now, repeat with me. A I I E I E O I Oi, A I I E I E. As the physical instructor in this school, I intend to take 25 pounds off of you. Mm, yes, sir. Attention. No. Heels together, chin back. Now, pull that stomach in. Yes, sir. I said pull that stomach in. Well, I is pulling, but it ain't got no place to go. <laughs> if I pull any more, something's going to stick out in the back. I think. All right. All right, Brown, we better start with the stomach exercise. Yeah. Uh. Come over here by the wall. Yes, sir. That's it. Now, raise your right foot to waist level and put it on the wall bar. <laughs> good, good. Now, touch your right kneecap with your forehead. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Now, put your left foot on the bar. Yes, sir. Before we put the left foot on the bar, we put the right foot back on the floor. Oh, yeah. There's a trick to it, huh? Not to the average person. Pick yourself up and we'll do some knee bends. Yes, okay. Now, hands on hips. Yeah. Now bend down on one and up on two. Yes. Now on the count. One and two and three and four and one and two. Uh, mister, when can I get out of this steam cabinet? Stop complaining, Brown. You've only been in there two hours. Holy mackerel. Now I know how a steam clam feels. Brown, <laughs> you've lost ten pounds already. But it's not enough. After another hour here, it's back to the diction lessons, then road work, two hours with the medicine ball, and then back to the steam cabinet... Then your lunch. Oh, boy, lunch. Yeah. A leaf of lettuce and half an apple. <laughs> Holy smoke, if Charmaine ever do say yes, I'm going to be too weak to go on a honeymoon. <laughs> Brown, we need more steam here. Hold it. More steam. Hold it. More steam. Hold it. Hold it. One and two and three and four and one and two three and four. More steam. More steam. More steam. Yeah, then there, half the two weeks in charm school, you really look great, boy. You were slim, well-dressed, and neat. Uh, where are you headed, Fernando? To Charmaine's. I can't wait to take my fiancé dancing. <laughs> wow, they really done an overhaul job on you, didn't they, boy? Yeah, you talking so high class there, I can't understand you myself. Right, old kingfish. I speak it from my diagram and everything else. <laughs> 
Well, I'll tell you one thing, and a sure man want a fella that really polish and cut it. She really got it in you, boy. Got yeah, it. you done changed the suitor. Yeah, well, here's the house here. I'm going in the house. Yeah. I shan't let any grass grow under my feet. <laughs> well, get on in there, and I'm sure that you was just the type of fella she after. Yeah. Ta-ta, cheerio, kingfish. Yeah, so long, son. Mm, let me straighten my tie out, Jeff. Oh, boy, wait till Charmaine see how refined I is. Oh, Andy, I ain't seen you for two whole weeks. Come on in the living room. There's someone I want you to meet. Oh, that actor fellow, huh? Well, I is happy to say that I is now prepared. Oh, no, no more actors for me. This is the kind of man that I really admire. What? Yes, he's a heavyweight wrestler. Oh, strangler, shake hands with Andy Brown. Duh, pleased to meet you, bud. <laughs> See you next Sunday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>